Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining the class. Daryl, Stephen, friends, Kanan, Neelam. Uh, thank you. And I, I don't know if others will join us, uh, but we will get started. Let's pray and start. Could uh, one of us lead in prayer, please? Lord, thank you, Lord, for this wonderful time that you've given us, a Father. Uh, we just surrender our lives this day, a Father, and the class ahead into your hand, a Father. I pray, Father, that you would give us wisdom, that you would give us understanding, your Father, as we uh, step into this this new chapter, new subject, uh, Father, whatever we, we learn, a Father, that we would understand and then put it into practice, a Father. We just surrender entire uh, the, the class and student into your mighty hand. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Stephen. All right. Today's class is going to be um, a short class. Uh, I'm not going to take much time. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, it is um, an important part of uh, running a Christian organization uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, managing the organization as a, as a whole. Uh, we're going to talk about the legal side of things. So let me just go ahead and <clears throat> share that little document. I just put a little outline together. As, um, uh, more things for us to be aware of. All right. So so we, we spent, I think, um, three, maybe three or four classes on uh, the accounting part, which is very important. Uh, managing the finances and all of that. Today, I just want to talk a little bit about the legal side of uh, our church and ministry uh, administration. Um, what is important, uh, you know, now, normally when you think about a church or you think about a Christian ministry, uh, we don't think about the legal side too much. You know, we think, well, I'm going to serve God. I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to serve people, and as long as I do that, uh, everything is fine. And it is true. For the most part, that's that's, that's where our focus is. And uh, we serve God, we serve people, and, you know, that's, that's fine. But we must not forget that uh, we, uh, as a church, or as a church, whether the organization, as a church or as a ministry, has legal obligations to the government, to the civil government, wherever we are. And it, this will, of course, vary from country to country and so on. But we are legally obligated to you know, meet whatever requirements are there. Uh, we can't say we are a church, we are a Christian organization, so we can do what we want. No, right? We have to follow the laws. Uh, there are uh, different laws set in different countries uh, by which religious organizations have to uh, abide, right? So I just want to bring our attention to that aspect. And uh, this is not legal advice or something. I'm not qualified. So what what I would encourage, you know, every church or every organization is find a legal advisor and keep, you know, have that understanding that they should be available and you will go to them whenever there is a need. So we have a church, as a church, we have uh, uh, a person who is our legal advisor. He's an advocate, a lawyer, and he specializes in religious organizations, so legal matters in religious organizations. So that's one part. And he's a local. He's right here in our city, Bangalore, and we interact with him as and when we need guidance. And then there is also a larger uh, network of lawyers. Uh, they're based in Delhi, but they are a network, so they cover all across India, who we also have access to. And uh, the, the reason we need that, especially in India, is if because we have churches outside of Bangalore, you know, and we have churches different places in the country, if something happens there, we need help. And therefore, we reach out to this uh, network. It's called ADF. And we, uh, uh, they, they are a network of Christian lawyers 
uh, specifically Christian lawyers, so that they provide counsel uh, for church and Christian organization related matters. And, and we actually have, have to had, have had to use their services when uh, we had problems uh, in our church uh, outside you know, in, in another part of our country. Right? So we have both. And uh, so something like this is is important. So I just want to bring it to your attention and you know when, when you when you're running your church, or your Christian organization, uh, that you keep this also in mind and have a good advocate um, to cover, you know, to give you guidance about where you're operating. And I'll just share, you know, some examples. So, so where, where, do, where, where does this legal advisor come into play? One would be in all matters about the entity itself. So you formed your religious organization, whether it's a church or a, some Christian work that you're doing organization. In, in, as far as in the structure and the running of that organization, the legal part, you go to that person for advice. And he or she will tell you, you know, okay, this is how you do. Some basic things would be in terms of the members of the the trust. We call them trustees. So these are the legally, these are the people who are legally obligated for that uh, uh, the running of the trust. So here we call them as trustees. Some places they call them as members. Uh, so when you when there's a change in the trustees, you know, some people step out, some new people come in. All this has to be done legally. You can't just arbitrarily change the names of the people. It can't be done that way. You have to go work, go to the 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 legal advisor, the advocate, the lawyer, fill out the paperwork, go through the legal procedure of, uh, you know, you have some trustees who are stepping down, some trustees who are coming in. So everything has to be documented legally and legally filed with the government. So the government knows who are the trustees for your organization. So that's something you need the advisor for. The other thing is also as part of the uh, running of the organization, uh, uh, the meetings and major decisions made by the trustees have to be documented. So, uh, and I'm speaking more from here uh, in in India. Uh, it has to be documented. A, there's a certain format. You have to record it in a certain way. So this is what the uh, the legal advisor will tell you. You have to record this. You have to keep it like this. This is how your record should be maintained. So, if any any time uh, there's a question, you have something to show, and this is the way that it's expected to be, right? So, he will advise us on that. He or she will advise us on that. So, as far as the legal entity is concerned, you need the input of the advocate. Another imp very important part is compliance filing. Right now, you know, in the recent years, thousands of organizations, both religious and NGOs, I think the, it goes into thousands, were shut down by the government in India. And, uh, you know, I mean, whatever reason, but the, 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 the bottom line is, if an organization did not file the required documents, the government took action. And they, that they used that, which is a valid reason to say, sorry, you have to close. Or in some cases, they discontinued their permission to receive funds from outside India. And so ultimately, it's just another way of shutting it down because if they don't have money to run, organization has to close. So like that's even some major organizations and some of them are Christian organizations closed, you know, because they failed to file with the government the documents. Now, especially when you have to report your source of income, right? So you're a religious organization uh, and, or if you're an NGO or, you know, you're supposed to report with the government where your money is coming from. And if you fail to do that, then they, the government has all the right to say, look, you failed to file uh, these documents. 
you fail to report your source of income and contributions and sorry we can't uh, let you continue you know uh, they 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 can say you know so you, we have a special perm i mean not we but organizations would have special permit to receive these contributions and that's withdrawn and then it's just a matter of time before the organization has to close so what i, what I want to say is this that although we are a church although we are a christian organization we do have legal obligation to the government and if we fail in our part to you know file everything annually so there are these annual documents that have to be filed if we fail in our part then the government has every right to take action and then there are some christian organizations who have uh, had to go through investigation you know they'll come and investigate because uh, they are receiving funds from outside but they haven't reported things so government comes to investigate you know and uh, and it becomes a little you know a bad name for the church or the christian organization that the government is invest investigating the organization uh simply because they failed to file a proper reports with the government right and 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 we can't call it persecution they're not persecuting they're just you know you failed to do what you're supposed to do so obviously they're coming now to investigate uh, they're coming now to you know, they withdraw your permits and so on so uh so that's very important you know from a legal standpoint just two more things here is when it comes to property matters again this is something you know it kind of goes without saying that any property that is purchased by the church or the christian organization should be in the name of legally it should be in the name of the church or the christian organization and this is where you know uh, sadly sometimes uh churches or pastors or they 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 do it wrong they sign it off in their name in their personal name and that's a disaster that's not the right thing to do and uh, uh and then it gets gets in, into a really big legal mess right and so i just wanted to make it very clear here i mean it's 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 very obvious but sometimes what is obvious needs to be stated um it's very uh, obvious that any property that's purchased using the church money or using the money of the organization or from contributions of the people that property should belong to the organization or the church not in any individual's personal name that's not allowed uh, it's a misuse of uh, uh, property the last point here in the legal side is when the church faces persecutions uh so this is what i mentioned earlier that uh, you know for whatever reason uh, you know at least in india we know uh people attack uh, this religious fundamentalists they attack the church for you know uh, and they use all kinds of excuses so when that happens and this happened on two occasions with our church in baloda bazar in north india so once they came people came and we had our own church building right so we are not we are not you know doing anything wrong we are the, our people the congregation is meeting inside our own church building our own church land our own property but they came they you know they somehow i guess they sneaked in they came they were recording things then they put it on local that local cable tv trying to instigate people against the church accusing the pastor and the people that there is conversion and the church church should be shut they converting people etc etc right so things like this you know and it did, you know it all automatically instigates people in the community they put it on local television and and local newspaper 
and these kinds of things. So then, you know, you have to respond. You have to do something. So that's when we contacted the network of lawyers in Delhi. And we said, look, this has happened in this town. Now, in that town, there was no proper lawyer. It's a smaller town. There's a police station. There's no court or anything. So they gave us the, uh, the, the nearest city where there's a Christian lawyer. So we had to contact that person. And then he immediately helped draft a document saying, you know, this is what we're doing. These are false accusations. Uh, people are trying to obstruct our service. You know, it's all wrong. And, and this is, you know, so he helped draft all of that. And then the good thing is uh, we got the support of um, the pastors, other pastors in that town. So I think about 10 to 12 pastors got together, Christian people, leaders, and they all went to the police station, right? And with the help of this lawyer, and they submitted this legally written document objecting what was being done against the local church and uh, filed it. Uh, we also did something else. We you know, found the email ID of that police station. We told people from our Bangalore to send emails, to call those who could write in Hindi. Those, because you know, you, you, that, that person needs to know, the police station needs to know that this church is not alone. You know, it's, it's got support from other parts of the country. And, and so we told people, you give calls to the police station, send emails to the police station, let them know that, uh, look, you know, it's not something that's local. You can't hide it. Others are watching what's happening and so on. So, there, you know, so legally, we, you know, we, we got the help of lawyers to do that. And uh, uh, from you know, whatever else we could do, we did it. And so ultimately, the police diffused the situation. And, and uh, the, the people who were trying to create problems against the church realized that, look, legally you're not supposed to be able, able to do this that we have taken legal you know at least in that city or in that town there was no court but we could go to the police station submit a, a legally written document stating everything uh, and uh, protect and defend ourselves so just a situation where in in case in times like persecution attacks we need the help of uh, uh, the lawyers involved. We need them involved to help us do things uh, according to the way it's supposed to be done legally with the police, with the courts, and so on. Now, we've never run into a situation where we needed to get to the court um, or anything. Uh, it's been uh, at this level of just with the police station, protecting our pastors, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, there was another situation in Varanasi, I think maybe a month or a month and a half ago, ago. But immediately we reached out to you know a leader there locally, work with the police, take care of our pastor, and make sure they're, you know, uh, I think he spent one night in the jail, I think. But uh, he came out fine. I mean, you know, we got them out and uh, everything is safe. So, there are these kinds of situations where uh, uh, things happen and we need the help of lawyers. So what I just wanted to say is, uh, you know, we are not lawyers. We don't know the law and we don't know the nuances and how we have to follow things. So that's why have somebody who can be a legal advisor right where you are. And also if the work you're doing is beyond your own city, uh, like in our case is extending in different places in India, then we need the support of a network of lawyers who can advise us anywhere, you know, which way part of the country situation happens. Uh, we need people who can, lawyers on the ground, closest to that city, who will be able to help us and resolve things, protect our people, protect the congregation, and uh, you know, and take action very quick, very quick. We have to respond very quickly uh, in such situations. Okay, so that's about you know what I just wanted to present here because uh, this is not an area I 
personally know a lot about uh, other than, look, this is what we have done. And uh, it is good that as a church or organization, you have something in place so that uh, you can protect yourself uh, legally with proper input from the lawyer. Okay. So we will pause here for today. Uh, next week, we will get into more of um, projects and execution. So what, what we have left in this course is uh, in church and ministry administration. So we're going to talk about projects, administration, uh, project execution, and then some general things about, you know, um, uh, I think I've put down things like teamwork and excellence and uh, preparing for the future, right? Um, so those are kind of the closing pieces that we will cover in this course. You know, how do you budget for a project? How do you plan for a project? Uh, how do you execute the project? And then other things as far as the church and ministry is concerned, which is like, you know, you want the, the people to be a strong team. You want to execute. Uh, you want excellence to be in the team. And then finally, you want to establish continuity. That means, uh, you know, there will always be, not always, but from time to time, there'll be a movement of leadership. Uh, uh, older leaders will have to step out of the way or give way to new leadership. And so how do you transition? How do you establish continuity? Because the work has to continue. So those are the things we will be looking at in uh, the uh, remaining lectures. And with that, we will have a, you know, a good idea of how to uh, govern or administer uh, a church or a Christian organization. Any questions before we dismiss for today? This is a very short lesson just to uh, bring our attention to the legal side of things and uh, make sure that um, as an organization, we're able to uh, protect ourselves legally. Any questions, any thoughts? No, Pastor. Good. Okay. Okay. All right. So uh, that's it. Today we'll wrap up early and uh, we'll pick this up next week as we you know, cover the remaining uh, chapters, remaining topics uh, in this course. Okay. Somebody can pray and we'll dismiss, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this uh, wonderful day, Lord Jesus. Uh, thank you for getting together, oh, Father God Jesus. Thank you for this lesson today, what we learned, oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. And always uh, let us be careful to uh, obey our uh, law of our land, oh, Lord Jesus. Also, let us be let us stick to all the rules and regulations that we have in our land, oh Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Also, let us not open um, a way for any manipulations of Father. Let us be in good order and let us be uh, organized as an organization, as a church of oh Father God Jesus. He uses us. We are instruments of Father God Jesus. Thank you, Father God. We submit this entire, entire day in your hand, oh Lord Jesus. We praise you, we honor your name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray this prayer of Father God. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh... Have uh, enjoy the rest of the day. God bless. Thank you. Thank you.